Our next story is about a global best-selling author, an award-winning podcast host, a life coach, a modern-day wellness guru, a monk, a self-help king, if you will, and now an alleged liar and plagiarizer. I'm talking about Jay Shetty. Slim chance that you have not already heard of this man. He has 50 million followers across social media. His content has been viewed more than 43 billion times. He is the go-to life coach for Hollywood stars. And in the case of Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck, a wedding officiator as well. The likes of Joe Biden, Michelle Obama, have been on his podcast named On Purpose. And last year, he even attended the White House state dinner for the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. How exactly did Jay Shetty get here? How did he garner such fame, such an elaborate fan base around the world? Well, he started churning out inspirational videos back in the year 2016. But what was so different about them? He also shared nuggets of wisdom, wisdom that seemed original and straight from the life guru's heart. But even that is up for debate now. So what is it about Jay Shetty that makes him stand out from others in his profession? It's his backstory. It's the fact that this entrepreneur was once a monk. Doesn't matter that he is the furthest thing from a monk today. Here's Jay Shetty's story. The year was 2007. Jay Shetty was merely 18 years old, a first year student at the CSS Business School in London. And that's when one of his friends invited him to attend a lecture at school. An ISKCON monk named Goranga Das was about to speak. Shetty did not want to attend the lecture. In fact, he wanted to go to a bar instead. And reluctantly, he sat through the session. And that very lecture ended up changing the trajectory of Shetty's life. So the life coach claims. He was so moved by the monk's words that he decided to become one himself. He followed Goranga Das back to an ashram in India. He spent his summers and holidays there studying ancient Hindu texts. After graduating from, uh, from uh, the college, Shetty moved into the Indian ashram full time in the year 2010. That is what he has claimed in multiple interviews. He gave up the so-called trappings of the material world. He lived the simple life of a monk for three years in solitude in a village near Mumbai. And after this, he had another revelation that his purpose in life is not to live as a monk, but to share his wisdom with the world, given his talent and oratory skills and thus began his transformation into a self-help personality. His riches to rags to riches again story is one of its kind. And if you take away this backstory, what would separate him from any other influencer? Not much. As it turns out, the story has loopholes and a Guardian report by John McDermott has highlighted them. According to the report, Shetty has told conflicting versions of his story. His age, when he had this spiritual awakening, often varied in different speeches at different platforms. In fact, people close to Shetty themselves have questioned if his conversion to monkhood was really that dramatic. There are allegations that he was not in an Indian ashram as much as he was in London in his three years of monkhood, that he grew up in the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, also known as ISKCON, meaning he had been associated with the spiritual organization before he even listened to Goranga Das. Shetty says that he spent his time as a monk in meditation and religious study, but he also spent a lot of time making videos for social media and hosting lectures at universities in London. And then there are allegations of plagiarism. In the year 2019, a social media influencer, Nicole Arbour, claimed that Jay Shetty built his social media presence by plagiarizing, by lifting content from accounts with smaller followings and making them look original and fresh. And lastly, 
His current lifestyle is falls apart from his monkhood. He lives in LA, he mingles with Hollywood stars, he shares wisdom, but only if you pay up. The luxury he currently enjoys is far from a monk's modesty. Quite apathetic to his years away from material trappings of the world, isn't it? Would you ever volunteer to be laid off? I know what you're thinking. What sort of an absurd question is that, right? Why would anyone choose to be laid off? The terms voluntary and lay off being used in the same sentence just sounds strange. But the reason why I'm asking that question tonight is because of what is reportedly happening at a particular tech firm. It has been claimed that the company asked which of the employees want to leave the company. It is called voluntary redundancy. They have asked those who want to go ahead with this to come forward. And this is happening at a time, by the way, when the company is looking to go ahead with a fresh round of job cuts. But what's the strategy? Why is this route being chosen? What's the logic here? Basically, the company wants to figure out which employees are happy with being laid off because letting go of them would be better than letting go of those who don't want to go. It would probably be a win-win for both sides. The employee wanted to leave in any case and the company was looking at letting go of some employees. According to a report in the register, the process is considered to be transformative and not financial. The company has reportedly told this publication that these job cuts are not to do with cost saving. Basically, there is a push to align the workforce with skills like artificial intelligence. The fact of the matter is, this is not looking like a bright year for the IT sector. We've been telling you about the situation and how bad it is. The AI threat is real. It could eat away jobs either directly or indirectly. Speaking of which, employees at Google might face job cuts. Google may lay off some employees. According to Bloomberg, as far as the number is concerned, the job cuts are expected to impact fewer than 10 people out of a team of about 250. And this is just one part of the story, of course. Last month itself, that is February 2024, witnessed a massive firing spree in the tech world. You will be shocked to know the details. In the month of February, over 15,000 employees were laid off by at least 74 major tech companies. I repeat, over 15,000 employees laid off by at least 74 major tech companies. If you are a part of the tech sector, I don't mean to scare you, but things are not looking good. Here's only hoping that they get better. Is Pakistan smuggling in nuclear cargo from China? What happened recently forces me to ask this question. Indian security agencies seized a Pakistan-bound ship. What was it carrying, you ask? Well, something that Pakistan claims to be commercial goods. But that is not what Indian authorities have discovered. On inspecting the cargo, they found equipment that could be used in nuclear and ballistic missile programs. This is what happened. A Malta flat ship sailed from China. It was on its way to Pakistan. The ship weighed over 22,000 kilograms, 22,000 kgs. And as the ship was on its way to Karachi, Indian security officials received an intelligence input that something was amiss. And soon, custom officials stopped the ship at Mumbai's Navasheva Airport, Navasheva Port. 
They inspected the cargo, so did a team of Defence Research and Development Organisation, and what they found sent alarm bells ringing. The ship was carrying a computer numerical control machine. It was originally manufactured by an Italian company. Now, what is this machine? And why is it a cause of concern? You see, a computer numerical control machine is essentially used for manufacturing, most commonly for machining met metal and plastic parts. It's fully automated using computer programs. The efficiency, consistency and accuracy these machines offer cannot be attained manually. You just need to feed in the commands in the system and the CNC machine will do its job. And that is what makes it dangerous. The system can very well be used to produce dangerous weapon components, even nuclear ones. So for all we know, Pakistan may be importing CNC machines to boost its nuclear and missile programs, and it will not be the first one to do so, by the way. North Korea also did the same. And such is the fear that CNC machines have been included in the Wassenaar arrangement for those unworst. Uh, the Wassenaar arrangement is an international arms control regime. It was basically established to boost international security and track the exchange of conventional weapons and dual-use technology. India is one of its 42 members. So when it got to know about the secret deal between its neighbors, India cracked down on the cargo ship. And it had every reason to do so. Consider what the authorities have discovered. There were multiple discrepancies in the shipping details, in the documents, such as the bills of loading. The consigner was mentioned as Shanghai JXE Global Logistics Company Limited. And the consignee was Pakistan Wings Private Limited of CR Code. But this was a lie, an evasion tactic basically to hide the true recipients. And on deeper digging, it was found that the consignment was shipped by Taiwan Mining Import and it was meant for Cosmos Engineering in Pakistan. And this is not the first time this Pakistani defense supplier has come under fire, by the way. Cosmos Engineering has been on India's watch list since March 2022. Back then, the Indian authorities intercepted a shipment of thermoelectric inst instruments. And this was again at the Navasheva port. The equipment was again Italian made. The question is, is there a pattern here? Well, it seems quite likely going by the developments. Pakistan is trying to get its hand on forbidden equipment from the West, it seems. And China is serving as its conduit. There have been multiple instances. In the year 2020, another Pakistan-bound Chinese vessel carried an autoclave concealed as an industrial dryer. It is again a crucial tool used in missile production. Just last year in June, the U.S. Bureau of Industry and Security sanctioned three Chinese companies. One was General Technology Limited, which supplied the autoclave I just told you about. The others were Beijing Luo Luo Technology Development and Changzhou Utek Composite Company. These firms were caught supplying missile applicable items to Pakistan. And now comes the CNC machine row. Pakistan is crying foul. It is claiming that the ship merely carried commercial goods. The Pakistan Foreign Office, in fact, has stated that the reports of the seizure are misrepresentation of facts. What about China? China also claiming that the consignment did not contain military or dual-use technology. But is that even surprising? On the global platform, both Pakistan and China pretend to be committed to international conventions. Then what explains the interception of covert shipments? This is hypocrisy at its best.